I think sometimes there are sort of arguments where you can say that players have let down the manager, etc. But I think that the defeat to Brentford is absolutely not the case for that because uh, David Moyes, I think, has got a lot to answer for actually for that um, result. I think it was very badly managed uh, from him um, overall, especially in the second half. Um, and I want to talk about that. But I also want to talk about a couple of things really as well um, in terms of our front line, um, in terms of Mikel Antonio. Um, I mean, all round, that was a really frustrating day, a really frustrating day because that defeat to Brentford, from my opinion, was self-inflicted. We could have won that game. We really could have won that game. The first half, I'm not trying to say we were brilliant first half, we weren't, but I was watching Brentford and I'm thinking they're not that great here. They're okay going forward, back, they look wobbly. Um, we always looked like we had goals in us. And, we, and the amount of quality we've got on that pitch, we should have been causing them far more problems than we did. But we still were winning at half time. We were, we, and let's be honest, we should have been leading by more. We were 2 1 up um, at half time. But I'll tell you what, the miss from Antonio, I do want to talk about that now, um, was shocking. I'm really, I'm really annoyed about that. At the end of the day, I mean, when I first watched it, I couldn't quite understand what happened. But looking at the replay, you can see when Bowen's put the ball across the face of goal, this bearing in mind, this is not far from half time. This would have made it 3 1. And I genuinely believe if we'd have scored this goal, or scored this chance, we would have won the game. I, I'm sure of that. I really am. I, I think it would have been a completely different game. I think it would have knocked the stuffing out of Brentford. We would have been buoyant. And I just think the second half would have played out very differently. Bowen puts the ball across the face of goal. It's going towards Ben Rama. Ben Rama is in a lovely position to tuck it away. And Mikel Antonio sticks out his leg to try and shoot it himself and misses the target. A glorious chance. Really, really, really poor from Antonio. He has been really poor recently. He's shock uh, shockingly bad, actually. He's, uh, and I'm tired of it, really. I, I'm tired of the, the performance, actually, from that game because I watched that. And in the preview, I said that if Antonio plays, which I expected he would do, um, I thought we were going to get a fresh, dangerous Antonio because he hasn't played recently. So usually that indicates you're going to get some, you know, with fresh legs and, you know, beast mode Antonio. But we didn't. We didn't get that at all. It was the opposite. It was he looked lethargic. He looked disinterested at times, walking around. I just a, a very frustrating performance to watch, actually, um, Michael Antonio. I was very annoyed. And that, that as I say, that chance was just was infuriating, actually. Really, really infuriating. Um, and it needs to be sorted. It just highlights again West Ham's problem up front. We, we've had this now year after year. It never seems to get addressed. We never seem to sort out our striker position, uh, keep relying on Antonio, and it's it's biting us again. It's biting us to have one man up front that we, we don't have any other options. Well, we do have other options, but this will come to that in a set. But th this is where we are at. We do have other options, but we have a manager that seems to be reluctant to use the options. Um, trailing, obviously, we were winning one, uh, two, one at half time. Um, it was a typical slow start to our second half, which just seems to be a constant issue this season. I don't know why. Aside from the Arsenal game, which was the opposite, we started very well. Second half, th this was another typical come out of the, out, out of the second half, slow, lethargic, tired. Just, I don't know what is being said. I don't know why that is the case. I, 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 can't, I just can't work it out. I don't think anyone can at this stage. No one's saying why we come out with such a poor attitude to start our second half. So I just don't understand it. And it bit us again. And Brentford, you know, turned the game around. Own goal from Mavropanos, of course. And then, uh, yeah, they went on to, to, to obviously uh, get, the, get the third goal and 3-2. Now, at this point in the game, you could see, you could, basically, there was a period of the game, the last sort of 20 minutes or so, where Brentford were going to sit back and and, and you know, settle for the lead, settle for the three two, and probably you know, with, with the intention of probably playing more counter, but invited West Ham on. And West Ham really looked out of ideas, um, very slow, and we really missed Paqueta sort of creativity. Um, and it was it we were struggling, we were really struggling to, to make something happen. And you look at David Moyes and you think, This is your time now, this is where you show your, your manager now, so you show what you're about and say, Right, let, let's make something happen. There is absolutely no defending putting on Pablo Fornells and Danny Ings when you're desperately chasing the game. What evidence does David Moyes have to suggest that that will be the answer, that will sort this out? There's none. 
None at all. It absolutely was no reason for him to make that decision. It's just total incompetence from the manager there. And really, really frustrating. Really frustrating to watch. Once again, so bloody predictable as well. You just knew that was what he was going to do. You knew that is what decision he's going to go with. He's going to put Danny Ings on, and he bloody did. And four nows as well. I mean, at least, at least with four nows, he tries, right? Like, I don't, I'm not uh, impressive at four nows this season, but I, I always like, like a lot of fans, I like four nows as a person, okay? Um, but he's not what he's not what that required. He's the opposite. He's the player you bring on when you're one go up and you're fighting to hang on to a lead. And you think, look, we've got the last 10 minutes to hang on here, get four nows on, he'll get stuck in and he'll just hold the position. He's not the player to bring on to nick a goal. He's just not that player. I mean, you've got, I mean, the, the options on the bench, you've got Max Cornet, right? That was the option. Surely to God, Max Cornet is the option. What is the point of having this player if you're never going to utilise him? I'm not, don't get me wrong, I'm not turning around and saying I've been overly impressed by Cornet, but he's not getting a chance to impress, is he? I mean, that's the, that's the time to say, go on, go out and show me what you got. A bit of pace, a bit of something to go out the team. You don't put on Pablo for nows. And Danny Ings, I mean, shocking signing for West Ham. Never, ever fitted in. Never looked right at this club. Um, a, a terrible, terrible piece of business. And for David Moyes to opt to put on Danny Ings ahead of Mabama, I will never, ever understand that. There is no logic to that at all. Why? It's never going to work. It hasn't worked before. Why would it work now? We had this ran so many times last season with the manager it's like insanity I'm going to keep trying the same thing if it doesn't work I'm just going to keep doing it I'm not going to change my opinion I'm going to keep doing it it's not working Dave it doesn't matter I'm going to keep doing it and he's doing it with Danny Ings I just don't understand it if Danny Ings has come on before and nicked us games last minute winners he keeps coming on and getting the odd win you'd go fair enough I get why the only reason David Moyes is going to... Oh, if you were going to have a conversation now with David Moyes, right, about that decision, you know what he'd say. He's experienced. He's Premier League experienced. Look at his goal-scoring record for, for Aston Villa. Look what he did at Southampton. That's what he would use as an argument. But that's not valid. He hasn't ever done it at West Ham. He's been here long enough now. It's just not working. And on top of that, you've got a situation with Mabama where he's effectively not signing a contract, whether it be down to numbers, but what we're hearing is because he doesn't see a route to the first team, then bloody put him on then. Show the player, here's your route to the first team. I'm playing you in a Premier League game now. You're behind Mikel Antonio. But no, Danny Ings. And what, I mean, Danny Ings was abysmal when he came on. Absolutely useless. He was hiding. I am still so frustrated, as you can tell. I am really am. I, I I cannot believe that. I thought it was a really poor performance all round. That that second half has angered me so much, um, and I'm furious with David Moyes. I really am um, because that management in the second half. I mean, I mean, even overall, but the management in that second half was absolutely shocking, like shockingly bad. Um, and I'm, I'm you know I'm annoyed at a few players as well. I, thought, I think some of the players let, were poor. Um, I wouldn't say let the manager down because I, I don't think the manager can use that for that when you when you are... If David Moyes puts out the perfect team, makes the right subs at the right times and they just don't perform, then you can't really have a go at him. But when he's making decisions that make absolutely no sense at all, you've got to point the finger at him and go, what are you doing? We're going to do another video. Um, well, actually, no, no. I tell you, like, as I record this, we're talking about uh, David Moyes' future. So there will be another video on that as well. Um, so you can go back and look at that. But I'll tell you what, he's doing himself no favours at all with performances like that on the touchline. None. Because you're just looking inept when you're making decisions that make literally no logical sense at all. There's none. There's, I, I cannot abide any decision. There's no um, argument at all for playing Danny Ings in that game. None. When you've got Mabama. And I really feel for Mabama. Why not? What, what have you got to lose, David? What have you got to lose by putting on a young lad and going, go on, go out there and get us a goal? Imagine Mabama had come, come on and scored and the confidence that lad would have now. He'd be buzzing to get back on. And then he could now be your impact sub or even your striker and have Antonio as your, as your um, 
as your impact. But no, let's go for Danny Ings. Let's go for plan B, Danny Ings, that never works. And yet again, it didn't work. I'm really appalled by it. Um, yeah, I'm sorry for the rant, but it, I just think it needs to be said. I mean, I'm, I'm just, I'm really fuming with that. That was a really bad day for West Ham. Really bad. Puts us under immense pressure now. Um, you know, big week ahead. Olympiacos, of course. We're doing a preview on that. Um, yeah, yeah, really bad day. I, I, I am, I'm still absolutely fuming with the Brentford res- performance and and the whole situation with that. As I'm talking about here, I, I really am. It's it's something that um, uh, yeah, it's got under my skin quite badly, as you can tell. Um, but look, I don't want to. I'm not going to try to dwell on it too much. Um, I do want to try and draw a line under it. And I do want to sort of look forward and hope that we can get a decent result against Olympiacos on Thursday, lift the mood, then go and beat Forest on Sunday. Because these are must-win games now. The next two games are absolutely crucial, league games. I mean, well, even the, let's say, next three then. Olympiacos, Forest and Burnley are must, must-win games, all three of them, to have any chance of West Ham getting back into the mix of European football season. Because we're going to slip away. We're slipping away by the week at the moment. You know, five defeats in seven games is absolutely shocking um, and worrying, really worrying. And David Moyes has done himself absolutely no favours with that shocking management against Brentford. 